Nothing a bit of paper, scissors, a permanent marker pen, and a f off yellow sheet of paper can't solve. Hi and welcome back to the show. My name is Mark Aroos. Today it's Saturday and I woke up really early to get ready for a big and exciting day. It's been a while that I've had this crazy idea of doing a documentary called Can Vegans Save the World? And the premise of the story of the documentary is that there's this preconceived idea of what vegans are. And we tend to make fun of people on a vegan diet. A few years ago, I decided to go vegan for a few weeks as a challenge to try and see if I could get in fighting shape and recover from my knee injury on a plant-based diet. It was an amazing journey and I actually discovered so many things around the benefits of following a plant-based nutrition and I looked into the research and it was fascinating for me. But what was more fascinating for me was when I asked my friends to say out loud the first words that come up when I say the word vegan. And for me that was astonishing to see just how much negativity and connotations is around being a vegan. But more than that, I think we have a tendency of making fun of vegans and calling them tree huggers and hippies and weak and, and so forth. But the question is, what if vegans were right? What if they actually were the ones who held the key to the future of humanity? And then we'd all be laughing our heads off while we're all busy getting type 2 diabetes, clogging up our arteries, and getting a whole bunch of heart disease that really we shouldn't be doing. I'm going to be meeting my friend Bart in Leicester Square in central London, where he's going to be helping me by filming my street interventions. I'm going to ask people on the street a few questions, and I'm going to sneak in at the end the question, do you think vegans can save the world? But before I do that, I need to shower, get dressed, and go to the barber. I'll be back in a second. And I'm back. The barber was so full that I didn't have time to get a haircut. I had to go to a different barber to get a beard trim to get me camera ready. Well, this will just have to do. The other thing I've realized, not a big deal, but I have a bit of a problem, is that I haven't printed out the little stickers that I wanted to put on the side of the microphone so that when I interview people in the street, you can actually see the name of the program. Now, I have a microphone. This is the microphone I'm gonna be using asking people around the street. Now this is what you meant to slide on the microphone. You might have seen this kind of item used before when journalists or sports personalities are interviewing people by holding the microphone close to their head. Now it looks a little bit something like this. So that when you're holding the microphone, you can actually see the label or the logo of the program or the TV channel. Well, fear not my friend, for I have a creative solution to this minute problem. That's right, nothing a bit of paper, scissors, a permanent marker pen, and a f off yellow sheet of paper can't solve. Well, it's not exactly the state of the art microphone design that I perhaps would have dreamed of. And this is what I always say to everyone I work with or all the talks I give, which is it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. You've just got to do something and get going. And the fact of the matter is time's running against me and I didn't have time to print it out. I don't have a printer for that matter. I went ahead and I created this little gem. That's right. So you've got on one side the Mark Aru show, Can Vegans Save the World? And of course, the name of my podcast, The Unconventionalist. So, the idea is I'll be able to be on the street, ask people questions, and you'll hopefully be able to see my amazing branding. I don't even know why I'm holding the microphone to my mouth. This doesn't even work. The amazing branding on this microphone, state of the art, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, magic, isn't it? Right, enough with all this arts and crafts. Time to hit the streets and ask strangers if they think vegans can save the world. I'm back after spending most of the day outside. I didn't really feel like recording actually this part of the video because right now I'm feeling um, really tired and it was a massive day of, of growth and learning in the sense that as soon as we arrived, skies opened up and it just poured down with rain. And one thing that I've realized very quickly is that when it rains and it's cold, people aren't super keen to stop and answer a few questions. And we did manage to get people to participate. And I guess maybe we've got roughly 
10 different sections. We've probably uh, interviewed maybe 14 people, which might sound either really little, depending on, on how you see it, or, or a lot. But I asked so many people that were just walking by, just stopping them, and I tried different techniques. And so you get rejected a lot, and you, and you get a lot of rejection. And that's normal, right? That's part of the process. And it was, it, was a, it was a really good reminder that for every 100 doors you knock on, you might only get one answer. And it's, and it's difficult. You know, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, I, I wish I could stay here and say it was just, oh, it was amazing. It was such a great day of learning and growth. And, but it was cold. It was raining. And it also really pushed me out of my comfort zone in the sense that you've got to ask everyone and everyone. And even people you think that might not want to participate actually end up doing and people you you think that might don't a bunch of really funny things we found out was that carrot is by far the most popular vegetable i mean it's it's the undefeated champion of most favorite vegetables when it comes down to people choosing what kind of vegetable they'd be and it's and it's one of those things i came back i felt really tired and as a result i went and ate a burger sorry about and ended up eating some chocolates i think that's one of my ways of coping when I'm feeling a bit down and a bit upset is I basically eat my feelings and I end up eating stuff. I don't necessarily regret it now. I don't feel great and, uh, you know, but I, I'm tired. I, all I want to do is go to bed and it's not even seven o'clock. It's like 6.30 at night. It's definitely been a challenging day. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't want to be the party pooper here, but I obviously did some research before sitting out into the street and, and talking with people. I just thought it was crazy. There's a website you can go and check out on cowspiracy.com. They've got an infographic with every single reference and link and research paper that they talk about. And there are a few facts that just completely left me flabbergasted, which are things like livestock basically takes 45% of the entire landmass. That's, that's half the planet is dedicated to livestock right now. There's 7.4 billion people living on this planet. It's estimated by 2040, we're looking at 9 billion people. And by 2050, as high as 11 billion people. Just to put things in comparison, in 1959, there were 3 billion people on this planet. That's nuts. We basically double population in less than 60 years. What does it mean if we've got more people? That means we've got more mouths to feed. And that means we need to produce more food with less land. And it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't matter if, if you're vegan, if you're vegetarian, carnival, paleo, it, it doesn't really matter. You look at the economics and you look down at the numbers and you're just thinking, we are so <laughs> if we don't do something. And I think this is why I wanted to make this documentary. It was kind of Ali G meets Cowspiracy, where you bring a bit of a sense of humor into this really tough and difficult topic. And I hope that by producing this pilot, uh, that Bart and I are, are, are coming up with, that we'll be able to show that there is some humor and that we can laugh about it, but there's also a really serious topic that's underlining this whole project. Um, and that's it. What if, what if vegans are right? And what if we're all just contributing to this big fat ticking bomb? No matter what your beliefs are, no matter what your ethic beliefs or, or your culinary orientation. And really proud of us. I, I want to actually say that I'm really, really proud of us that we had no idea what we were doing. Neither of us have any background in documentary making. We're not journalists. We're not media specialists. And we met up a few weeks ago and Bart was great to say, look, I just, I'm really scared that we're not going to do this. I said, let's book a date. We put the 20th of February down on the calendar and we just went out there and we just got going. And this is something I talk about so much and that I believe in so much that you will learn so much more by doing. Sure, you might feel like me right now, a little bit down, a bit tired, but I can guarantee you that tomorrow I'll wake up, Bart will have sent me some of the footage that we took from today. And I will be like, oh my God, it's amazing what we've managed to achieve. And we had no idea what we were doing. Learning by doing is the best gift you can give yourself, really. Yes, it comes at a cost, it's difficult, and you've got to be able to embrace failure. Nothing's gonna be perfect. I mean, you saw what my microphone looked like. It was, it was pretty ridiculous. But it worked, because as we were outside, I was holding this microphone, everybody was staring at us, was asking themselves questions. A lot of people avoided us. A lot of people said no to what we were doing. And now, just in this one afternoon, we've learned so much, more than I could ever learn from reading a blog or probably watching a video, because we experienced it. So it's something that's gonna become engraved in our, in our memory and in our, in our hopefully uh, we'll be able to do a better job next time because I think this is a really exciting and fun project that I want to share with the world and hopefully you guys can be part of this project. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed what you saw or you just want to make me feel like everything's going to be okay, give it a thumbs up, 
Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and feel free to share it with a friend that's going through a similar process. But until then, remember, you're freaking amazing. Thank you